in today's lecture we are going to talk about the cytoplasmic inclusions present in the bacterial cells a number of inclusion bodies storage granules are clearly visible in cytoplasm by light microscopy these are either organic inclusion bodies like glycogen granules polyhydroxybutyrate granules cyanopicin granules or gas vesicles or inorganic inclusion bodies like polyphosphate granules metachromatic granules and magnetosomes inclusions accumulate when a cell is grown in the presence of excess nutrients and they are often observed under laboratory conditions normally inclusion bodies are involved in storing energy reserves or building blocks for the cell these inclusion bodies may or may not be membrane bound one of the more common lipid storage granules is poly beta hydroxy alkanoid it is a long polymer of repeating hydrophobic units that can have various carbon chains attached to them the function of pha in bacteria is as a carbon and energy storage product just as we store fat bacteria store pha the most common form of this class of polymers is poly beta hydroxy butyrate let us see the general structure of pha monomer where a methyl group is attached as the side chain phb accumulates in distinct membrane bound bodies around 0.2 to 0.7 mm in diameter that is readily visible in electron microscopy and stained by sudan black for light microscopy the accumulation of phb is brought about by specific enzymes that are formed during fatty acid synthesis the beta hydroxy butyric acid units of phb are joined by ester bonds linking the basic hydroxyl group of one molecule of butyric acid with the acidic carboxyl group of another with elimination of water recently another such lipid reserve material poly beta hydroxy octanoic acid was found in pseudomonas oleovoranas when this organism was grown with octane as the sole carbon source some pha polymers have plastic like qualities and there is some interest in exploiting them as a form of biodegradable plastic the next cell inclusions are glycogen granules glycogen is another common carbon and energy storage product glycogen is a polymer of repeating glucose units composed of long chains formed by alpha 14 linkage and branching chains connected by alpha 16 linkage bacteria store excess glycogen in the form of membrane bound granules when cells containing glycogen granules are treated with iodine they become reddish brown however these granules are better observed under electron microscope many bacteria of enteric group and anaerobic spore formers like clostridium species form glycogen granules as carbon reserve storage granules yet another storage granules are cyanophycin granules many of the cyanobacteria accumulate nitrogen reserve granules called cyanophycin granules these are composed of large polypeptides containing the amino acids arginine and aspartic acid and represent 8% of cellular dry weight these granules are not membrane bound cyanophycin granules are produced when the culture approaches stationary phase 
and are rapidly degraded when the growth is reinitiated. Bacteria accumulate cyanophycin as storage compound for nitrogen, carbon and energy when growth is limited by another nutrient. Polyphosphate granules are also storage granules. Many bacteria and microalgae accumulate phosphates in the form of polyphosphates. They act as energy reserves. Because they were first described in spirillum volutens and because they bring about characteristic changes in the pigmentation of certain dyes, they have been given the name volutin granules or metachromatin granules. These granules are composed of polymetaphosphate and are common in diphtheria bacillus and in certain lactic acid bacteria. These granules stain reddish with blue dyes like methylin blue and are highly refractive and hence are easily observable under light microscope. The volutin granules represent intracellular phosphate reserve when nucleic acid synthesis does not occur and when the latter starts, these phosphates are incorporated into the nucleic acids. Sulfur granules are also storage granules. Sulfur granules are present in bacterial cells growing in H2S rich environment such as photosynthetic purple sulfur bacteria and filamentous non-photosynthetic bacteria like Bagiatoa and Thiotrix. Stored sulfur in these granules is oxidized to sulfate when the sulfide in the medium has been completely utilized. Carboxysomes are important cell inclusions found mainly in obligate autotrophs. A number of photosynthetic bacteria like cyanobacteria, purple bacteria and chemoautotrophic bacteria like nitrifying bacteria and thiobisbacilli contain polyhedral bodies called carboxysomes. These are membrane bound bodies about 100 nanometer in diameter. They contain the enzyme ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate carboxylase, Rubisco, the most important enzyme in carbon dioxide fixation. Carboxysomes serve as the principal site of carbon dioxide fixation. Chlorosomes are present in photosynthetic green bacteria. These are cigar-shaped bacteria. Sorry, these are cigar shaped vesicles located immediately below the cell membrane. They are membrane bound vesicles 50 nanometer wide and 100 to 150 nanometer long visible only under electron microscope. All chlorosomes consist of a core and a 2-3 nanometer envelope. The core consists of rod elements made up of aggregated chlorophyll while the envelope is a monolayer of mostly galactolipid and some proteins. Chlorosomes are principally sites of photosynthesis. Gas vacuoles are yet another cell inclusions present in aquatic bacteria. Most bacterial cells have a density higher than water and hence they tend to sink in an aqueous medium. Bacteria like cyanobacteria, purple and green photosynthetic bacteria, halobacterium and thiotrix have developed gas vacuoles to counter this gravitational pull. Gas vacuoles are aggregates of a number of gas vesicles. Each vesicle is a membrane bound hollow cylinder 75 nanometer in diameter and 200 to 1000 nanometer in length. The membrane here is not a lipid bilayer but protein in nature. The membrane is impermeable to water but freely permeable to gases. Gas vesicles regulate the buoyancy of the microbes by changing the amount of gas contained within them. Release of gas from the vesicle causes the bacteria to fall in the water column while filling the vesicle with gas raises their position in the water column. 
as mentioned above since the protein membrane is permeable to gases the vesicles cannot store the gases hence the composition of the gases in the vesicles automatically depends upon the dissolved gases in the surrounding medium the structural rigidity of the protein membrane is very important in maintaining the gas space inside the gas vesicle also important is the chemical nature of the protein thus gas vacuoles are clearly responsible for maintaining the buoyancy in aquatic micro microbes so that they can float at the depth where they can acquire maximum light oxygen and nutrients magnetosomes are present in magnetotactic bacteria richard blake originally discovered the magnetotactic bacteria way back in 1975 these bacteria orient themselves in the magnetic field this is because they have membrane encapsulated organelles called magnetosomes these are filled with crystals of magnetite a magnetic mineral these crystals are assembled by the bacterium in the magnetosome and act as an internal compass needle aligning with the earth's magnetic field it is believed that these bacteria use this ability to sense magnetic fields in order to find their preferred environments recently it was found that the membranes of individual magnetosome compartments were connected to the outer cell membrane though probably still a little controversial it is very clear that the magnetosomes are small little blebs coming off from the cell membrane most of the magnetotactic bacteria grow best at low oxygen concentrations hence the main function of magnetosomes is probably to guide such bacteria toward the sediment where oxygen concentration is lower magnetotactic bacteria exhibit magnetotaxis the process of orienting and migrating along earth's magnetic field lines as can be seen in this short video clip see how the bacteria are aligning themselves to the magnetic field 